Now, before we get into today's episode, I want you to be sure and subscribe to our newsletter. There is a link below to it in the description. That way we can stay connected no matter what happens, even if the fit hits the shan, because we got a country to save. When you look at urban public education, it's not public education, it's a crime scene. Let's start with Detroit. Declining enrollment was compounded by financial mismanagement. Capital that is raised to repair school buildings in Detroit is often misused. One big example was Southwestern High School. Their swimming pool was shut down in the 1990s, I believe, because couldn't pass a health inspection. The district allocated a significant amount of money to repairing the pool. The construction work was so poor that they ended up closing the pool again after it was reopened. This has only gotten worse in recent decades. From 1999 to 2012, more than $100 million was spent upgrading schools that were closed within a few years. From a high of 380 schools in 1975, only 97 are open today. Baltimore. Tonight, an alarming discovery out of a Baltimore City high school where hundreds of students are failing. As Project Baltimore's Chris Papps explains, we found a student who's passed three classes in four years and is ranked near the top half of his class. We're not letting none of this get the best of us. All right? Be strong, son. We got this. He's stressed, and I am too. Like, I told him I, I probably will start crying. Like, my son is, I don't know what to do for him. This coming June is when Tiffany France thought her son would receive his diploma. And I'm just trying to fight. He like, Mom, what, what was all this for? What did I do this for? Like, don't he get a chance? Do he get a chance? But after four years of high school, this mom just learned her 17-year-old has to start over. He's been moved back to ninth grade. Why would he do three more years in school? Y'all, he didn't fail, the school failed him. The school failed at their job. They failed, they failed. That's the problem here, they failed. They failed, he didn't deserve that. France's son attends Augusta Fell Savage Institute of Visual Arts in West Baltimore. His transcripts show in four years, he has passed just three classes, earning two and a half credits, which places him in ninth grade. But France says she didn't know that until February. She has three children and works three jobs. She thought her oldest son was doing well because even though he failed most of his classes, he was being promoted. His transcripts show he failed Spanish 1 and Algebra 1, but was promoted to Spanish 2 and Algebra 2. He also failed English 2, but was passed on to English 3. I'm just assuming that if you are passing, that, that you have the proper things, you know, to go to the next grade. And, you know, the right grades, you have the right credits. As we dig deeper into her son's records, we can see in his first three years at Augusta Fells, he failed 22 classes and was late or absent 272 times. But in those three years, only one teacher requested a parent conference. Cleveland? And now to those failing grades. 14 Ohio school districts received an F on those new state report cards released today. Eight of them are right here in Northeast Ohio. Cleveland already on an improvement plan for years. Lorraine, as Tara said, already under state control. And that failing grade means the state's moving in on another local district as well. Five on your side, investigator Scott Knoll, live in East Cleveland, where it's three strikes and you're out for school leaders tonight. Yeah, Rob, school leaders here received official notice today. The State Department of Education taking back control after three straight years of East Cleveland schools failing to make the grade. For Jason Calloway. Education is the biggest key to uh, change in any situation. The proof that something needs to change is all around East Cleveland. I mean, yes, yeah, state, please come in and, and make an effort to help us uh, change this community. 
A change he believes starts with education. It's a system Callaway says that's failed the city's kids for too long. And then we're losing generations of kids that are graduating and are growing up in these communities that are lacking the, 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 the education that they need, lacking the support and the opportunities that it's going to take to even to, to, to operate and function in this world today. Do you hear anything like privacy is guaranteed? Today, I would like to introduce a new privacy and cybersecurity application tool called Secure, spelled S-E-K-U-R. Secure is using proprietary encryption and is offering secure instant messaging and email. All communication is based on servers and data centers hosted in Switzerland without using any of the big tech platforms such as Amazon Web Server or Microsoft or Google, and also following the strictest Swiss data privacy laws. Privacy is a big issue now. Literally, we know that people, if they want, they can read your emails or messages or bank information when you do bank transfer. Constantly, your private information, pictures, chat, email have been stolen and your data have been mined and sold by big tech. When you use a free product, you are the product and you are handing over your entire life to big tech companies. Secure never uses open source technology. Never mind your data and never ask for your phone number. Also, you can easily communicate with both secure user and non-secure users by using the chat by invites for messaging others and using secure send when sending an email to others like your doctor, banker, lawyer, or anyone else. You can also set a time to destruct the message or email to protect your privacy. Secure's technology allows you to communicate privately without fear of spying from your internet provider and without the need of a VPN service to secure your connection. Secure is your solution to stop the constant theft of your digital identity. It costs only $5 for the messenger and only $10 for the email and messenger package. Go to secure.com and take back your privacy today. That's S-E-K-U-R.com. Use promo code Larry for 25% off. Oakland. I think the dropout problem in Oakland is probably the most serious issue we're facing. Uh, I would frame it a little bit larger as a push out problem. I think we haven't designed schools and the education system in ways that really meet the needs of all young people. In particular, when you look at who is being successful and who isn't, uh, largely children of color, African American, Latino, kids are being pushed out faster than anybody else and specifically boys. So we have, I think, one of the most significant issues is our under preparation of young men of color and that plays out then in terms of who's employed and who isn't, uh, plays out in terms of the crime, in terms of the extraordinary murder rate and violence in Oakland. So we have to take really serious responsibility as a city to change these outcomes. So I think it's probably the most significant issue we could be addressing uh, as a city. Now let's turn to St. Louis or more specifically the attitude about education by all too many urban St. Louis students. The only kids that disrespect me is black kids. That's it. My own are the only ones that disrespect me. I walk in any other school, they like, they go ET. We taking notes. I come home, you talking. You capping jokes. You think something funny. Look how we living. Ain't nothing funny. Ain't nothing funny, y'all. Look, when I got my PhD, what embarrassed me, I'm in there, they asking me like, what's wrong with our urban schools? Like, why are you asking me? I'm in classes like you in class. Every, uh, the, print, the teachers want to know, professors want to know, well, why are your kids, what's the problem in the school system? I'm embarrassed, y'all. I'm a grown man. I'm embarrassed that they talk about y'all. And you know why I'm embarrassed? Because what they don't know is you ain't even trying when you take the test. You didn't give your best. They think you dumb. You ain't dumb. You can't take our people from Africa and put us in the diaspora and spread us all over the world and we survived slavery and we can't pass the test? Come on. I ain't stupid. You take everything from us and we still survive? And you gonna tell me we can't learn how to write? Have you lost your mind? We are survivors. That's all we do is survive. And you're going to come and tell me you can't take a test. No, you can take the test. The problem is when you take the test, you barely take the test. I challenge you to go in there and get that dog on piece of paper and that pencil and do your best. I challenge you. 
Newark, what strategies would you suggest if you had control. We've got to stop paying our teachers, in my opinion, as wage workers. They're not. They are professionals. And we should pay them to get a job done. We should pay them based upon results. Now, that's blasphemy to a lot of people, uh, to pay in a way that incentivizes behavior and when you get paid based upon outcomes. And I believe in this era of 21st century standards, we can create fair ways to judge our teachers. We know that better teachers run by, uh, in schools, run by principals who have more autonomy. Yes. Create more effective learning environments. Yes. Period. Period. Good teachers radically pay them more, hold them accountable for results. It's crazy that in places like New York and Newark, it's almost impossible. It takes hundreds of thousands of dollars just to be able to fire one teacher. And one that universally everybody says is bad. We cannot vilify any group. Okay. Teachers as a whole in Newark, um, even those that are operating in some of the lowest performing schools, who I know very personally, are going in their own pockets and paying for kids, not just for classroom supplies, but often paying for clothing for their kids and other things. I mean, the, the heroism amongst the average teacher in Newark, and I mean that, the majority of our teachers are extraordinarily committed people. But, uh, but to me, accountability is really three things. One is having clear standards that we all can agree on. Number two is having ways of measuring progress to those standards. And three is having consequences when you fail to meet those standards. Now, Senator Booker mentioned how difficult it is to fire an urban public teacher. Nothing exemplifies this more than this elementary school teacher in Los Angeles. The teacher in question, he would bind the kids' hands behind their back. He would blindfold them, and in a sort of sick, perverted science experiment, he would tell the kids that they were a testing the sense of taste. So he would provide them different things, saltine crackers, cookies, and on those saltine crackers or cookies would be semen. Mm -hmm. uh, also, and he would photograph them as they were eating uh, these uh, semen-laced cookies. The other thing that he was doing, Dr. Drew, is he had these Madagascar cockroaches. So, so giant cockroaches. Giant. Three, four-inch cockroaches that are, are thick, uh, carnival-like cockroaches. Ugh. And uh, he would allow the cockroaches to crawl on the blindfolded kid's face and head. He would photograph them. And, would they uh, be e eating this gross stuff at the same time and all this thing happening together? Yeah, it was, it was all a, a, a play on the testing or the experimentation of senses. It's clear that he's a sexual psychopath. He absolutely mm -hmm. has no fundamental concepts of morality, <clears throat> no empathy, lack of remorse. He's also a sexual sadist. He indulges, he likes to humiliate, if you will, torture his victims. And more importantly, he is not amenable to treatment. Exactly what did it take to get rid of him? This is from the LA Times. The Los Angeles Unified School District paid Mark Burnt, the teacher at the center of the Miramonte Elementary child abuse scandal, $40,000 to drop the challenge to his dismissal last year. I kid you not. The payout consisted of four months of back salary plus reimbursement for the cost of health benefits. Burnt was fired by the Board of Education in February 2011 after officials learned that the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department was investigating him for alleged lewd acts against students. He was arrested last week. The firing took Burnt off the district payroll, but he fought to keep his job through an appeal process that lasted until he settled with the school system and resigned in June. As I said, I kid you not. The settlement with Burnt came in the face of a dilemma, said the LA Unified General Counsel, David Holmquist. A hearing on the dismissal was pending and the district didn't have evidence to justify the firing because the Sheriff's Department investigation was ongoing. We were told we could not do any investigation to avoid interfering with a law enforcement probe, said Holmquist. We didn't have any evidence and we couldn't put on any witnesses. We didn't have anything to successfully defend a challenge, end of quote. My goodness, it is time for parental school choice. The money should follow the child rather than the other way around so that parents have an opportunity to put their kid in the school they want, whether public, private, religious, or charter. We do this for college and for graduate school, but for some reason there's a no-fly zone when it comes to choice K through 12. That's got to end. I'm Larry Elder, and we've got a country to save. Out.